So today is the Outlier Podcast Festival. Super excited about surrounding myself with other people that are doing podcasts and getting together to collaborate, going over what's working, what's not working, and ultimately helping everybody level up in the podcasting game. Um, and he kind of has a little bit of a, a twist as to how he's doing these things. And so I just wanted to bring him up here and talk about it. So without further ado, Tyler Harris, come on up. Oh my god, unbelievable. <laughs> You're so focused on creating content all the time, you start coming with these ideas of like, so what are we going to do over there? And it was these things that didn't happen before we were creating content. It was like, hey, we got a, a festival we're going to go to on Friday. What if we get into Vegas like at, you know, in the morning on, on Thursday? What could we possibly do to create content? Well, it just so happens that that stuff is also really fun. So yeah. yesterday we uh, raced ATVs through the desert uh, out in Vegas for like five hours, and it was incredible. We had like two Go- GoPros mounted, and he's sitting, this grown man that lives with me pretty much 24-7. And we're uh, going to get into that here. We'll get into that. Uh, but he uh, he's sitting there like just going up and down, like trying to hold a camera. And we just created a bunch of awesome content yesterday. But we're going through these rocks, and I just look around, and I'm just like yelling at him because it's super loud. I'm like, TJ, like I'm like, look around, like this this is work today, like this is work today. I just had this realization. It's just like this such incredible um, experience to be able to just document life and have it be a part of uh, kind of the journey. So. Yeah, let's talk about that, right? So let's let's paint the picture first. Let's introduce you officially sure. to, to the to the people here. You're all in. So tell us tell us what you're doing for a living and then why this? And we'll get into the details. Sure. So I think what I do for a living, it's the best answer to the question that everyone always has is is what if what I don't do what if I, what if what I do is not interesting? So I sell life insurance. Boring. And yeah, like there's no like anyone that says they're passionate about selling life insurance has just been telling themselves that lie for so long that they've <laughs> fully bought into it. But no one, no one is. And but that's what I do. And so I think there's this huge distinction in doing what you're passionate about or what you enjoy doing, and you'll never work a day in your life, and all these cliche things that they love to throw on like beautiful pictures and get you motivated and inspired. I just believe that you should excel 1000% in what you do so that you can go experience and do all the other stuff that you are passionate about. And you'll actually become passionate about something that you excel in. And so that's what I've done. I just, I go all in on my career so that I can do all this extra stuff. And so that the big thing we'll get into that I don't have to monetize any of the other stuff. So I don't sell anything. I don't have to worry about that whole side of it. It can be purely just trying to provide value for the sake of doing the right thing because it's the right thing, right? And and putting this message out there without any transactional behavior whatsoever. Yeah, well, let's let's talk about what you're doing. You have your team, right? This this videographer following you around like you're on a reality show. Why? What are you doing? Because I'm extremely interesting. <laughs> No, that's a, that's the, like that's the thing I love. Like, there's nothing special about me whatsoever, um, and, and I don't say that. Like, I hate when I even say that, and and to know that someone's thinking like, "Yep, that's what they that's what they say." Like, that's the humble thing to say. Like, no, like they're legitimately like I'm way worse than you, by far. But that whole someone earlier today talked about this "Who am I" concept or complex. And who am I? Who am I to have a person following me around with a camera? Who am I to have a podcast? Who am I to do uh, Instagram Live right now? Who am I to do all these things? And the reality is, is you're someone with a story and you've been through things. And, and it's become very, very deep for me. Ryan Mickler said it probably best at Meltdown in the Desert last year when he talked about the fact that someone is waiting to hear your story. Like someone in Utah, I live in South Carolina, but someone is waiting on their phone or on their computer to hear the very same message that they could get from Tony Robbins or Gary Vaynerchuk or you know, back like Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, like I, like, I love all the old school stuff, but their exact same message through my filter and through my lens, which is my context, is the only way that they're actually gonna receive it and then be able to internalize that and make a pivot or make one little change that impacts the rest of their life. And they're literally sitting there waiting to hear it from you. And it can come different from you than me, than TJ, than Colby. And I've just become extremely 
passionate about finding those people and just by putting it out there and just documenting my life. And the who am I is like, to me, it's like you're, you're an individual with worth and value. It's just waiting to be unleashed on people. Yeah, you're, you run a very successful um, business that selling the insurance. You don't need to do this, but you are. And if you are doing it, why not monetize it? Let, let's talk about that. You, you've said to me that you are putting out daily content, right? Which is not cheap. Yeah. It looks great, by the way. So, and we'll, we'll give you the, the links here at the end. But uh, yeah, it looks great, highly produced, and you're not monetizing it. Why? And you're not monetizing it for five years, by the way. Yeah, and, and I've been getting weird lately, thinking like, what if I never do? Because the reality is, if, if I never have to, and that's the key word, if I never have to, then that obviously means that whatever I was doing as my full-time deal was incredibly successful, because I never had to. The majority of people, it's all about time allocation. So any time that I have allocated to my career that I'm having to take away from to spend it on this personal branding or the social media or whatever you want to call all this other stuff, there has to be a give and take. Like I'm taking time away from here. I have to have monetary value come from here for me to look at that as a good equation. For me, my mentality is I'm going just all in here so that I don't have to replace it there. And I just think that there's something different about that relationship between me and someone that follows my content or someone that engages, someone that I have conversations with, whether that be in a DM or a phone call or a meeting in person or an interview on a podcast, that they know that there's no money exchanging hands and in turn I'm able to tell them the truth because I'm not worried about the ROI of them feeling good about the answer. Like I'm not worried about them saying, well, that kind of hurt my feelings or that's not really what I wanted to hear. So I'm going to quit paying the $39.99 to be in Tyler's mastermind. I can just tell them the truth because I don't want your money. I don't need it, but I just I don't want it. Like it has nothing to do with it. And it's gone over well. I mean, you, um, again, because of the great content that you're putting out, you have a lot of followers. Your platform keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And to most of us, or uh, many of us, that would be very tempting to turn, offer a mastermind group, offer a book, offer a whatever, but, but, but you're not doing it, and you just said that you might not ever do it. Yeah. Um, for those of us that are- I didn't say that on the record, by the way. <laughs> no, on the record, it's, it's on, on video. <laughs> uh, for those of us that are trying to build our own platforms, our own audiences, right? Uh, again, I think you have a different approach, but what can we do to kind of get to this? And I think Ryan Mickler said, and a, and a couple others, it's a grind. Yeah. I'm sure there are days where you don't want to be followed around by a DJ, right? But, but yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, here he is. It just looked to be really weird, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, what, what motivates you? What keeps you going when the days when you want to give up? I mean, first off, that's a great question. And I, I can't claim any of this stuff as being my own thought. Like, uh, the majority of people don't realize the, how the genius behind what Gary Vaynerchuk is actually doing. And I'm basically just following a blueprint that he's laid out that most people just aren't willing to follow. Because it takes an insane amount of effort without a financial reward, without that carrot at the end. And so I'm just following this path that is directly based on disproportionate value. You know, he talks about that all the time, but disproportionate value. So whether that means I monetize ever or whether that means you're monetizing always, it's still about providing more value than you're receiving in return at the end of the day. I, I kind of got some heat in the beginning when I started talking about this not monetizing thing. I don't have anything wrong with people that monetize. If you're providing value, you should receive something for that. Like that's the way, that's the, way the world works. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. I was like, golly, I gotta quit talking about this. Last thing I wanna do is have everyone that monetizes anything and ever not like my content because I talk against it. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. It's just a different uh, approach. But I think universally, if you just look at trying to provide value first and trying to provide more value than you're receiving at all times, I think that's the key uh, mindset that goes behind it. So with the audience you've been able to build, what do you think um, attracts them to you? Why, why are they tuning in every single day? Because it's, it's kind of the Gary Vee uh, uh, blueprint like you talked about and a few others, but personally what I, what I like about this, it doesn't sound preachy, yeah. you're just kind of telling your story. Again, talking about storytellers, you're a great storyteller when you're, when you're talking about the business or the meeting that you just had, right? That you just walked out of what worked, what didn't work. 
Uh, where, where did that come from? And, and is this going to be, what kind of gets the most engagement with, with what you're I, doing? I think, like, that's very nice of you to say, but I think the reality is I'm just taking the whole document versus creating thing very literally. So it's not necessarily that I'm actually a great storyteller. I'm literally just documenting my life. Literally. Like this right now is being documented. And Gary's talked about it recently. I get, there's times where I've get, gotten, well, it really is me touch the bottom. There's times where I'm getting so, I get so caught up with the analytics, like how many likes, comments, shares, how many views, how, how much, you know, what, what did this do versus that? And, oh man, I thought this was gonna be the best vlog we've ever put out, which we say that pretty much every single time. Like, it's like, this is the best one yet, it's the best one yet. And then you look at it the next day and like, oh, it only has this many views, I thought it would have this many. And then we literally did a vlog the other day like two days ago, that I've gotten more comments saying it's the best episode we ever did. And we were driving back home, we had no content for the day, we were five minutes from my office, and we were like, hey, let's just say something real quick in the car. So we called it a tip from the whip, which is what I would call it, which is ridiculous. But it was a tip from the whip, and it was literally just five minutes of me talking in the car. That's it, that's the entirety of the video. And everyone has been commenting saying, this is the best vlog episode you've ever done. But it's like, to me, it's like, oh my gosh, if you had any idea how much money and time went into all these other vlogs that are way more, way more involved. But it's literally just documenting all of it and not caring necessarily about those analytics, not necessarily caring whether this got 10 likes or 10,000 likes, but doing it for the recall doing it for the legacy. Like I have a 19 month or 20 month old uh, daughter and doing it so that she will have this footage when she's 30, 40, 50, like how incredible would it be for you to watch a vlog of your grandfather, of him going in and out of his daily life when he was your age. Like you would watch that, you would cherish that footage. Sure. We're creating that footage. And whether this takes off or, or not, selfishly, it's just for me to have it. Like I'm gonna be that crazy old man that's sitting in my basement, like yelling at my wife to come down and like, hey, come downstairs and listen to me and TJ freestyle in the car. Episode 12 of the vlog from back in 2018, it's like 2050. Yeah. And uh, just a habit, like for, this stuff lives forever. Good. I, I don't want to monetize or uh, kind of take up most of the time with my questions. Any questions? Anything you want to ask? Anything that, uh, that you want to do? Obviously, very successful at what he's doing. Um, this is the time, yes, in the back. So because of what I do selling life insurance, he can't go into the individual meetings. And so my vehicle is like a mobile studio. And I'll just take this moment to gratitude for him. Like he's incredible, not just in the skills that he has and his abilities, but in his willingness to do what he does. Like he works 18 hours a day, every day. And 13 of that is sitting in my car editing. Legitimately, it's like, not just like, oh yeah, we drive a lot. No, like sitting in my car when I'm in meetings for like 10, 12 hours a day. So the average life insurance agent, if you just looked up statistics, that do it full time for a career, sell between like 120 and 150 life insurance policies a year. It's kind of like the number that you always hear. In the last three years, I've sold over 7,500 life insurance policies, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, but it's because I work 18 plus hours a day, every single day, and I meet with people when normal people aren't meeting with people, like at 11 o'clock at night, at midnight, at one o'clock in the morning, whenever is, they're free. And so he's there in the car when I'm in those meetings. And so he's pretty much documenting everything outside of the actual transactional sales process for me. And a lot of that's just, just because it's just, um, just because it's such a private, uh, intimate environment that we're in, he can't be in, the, in that. But everything else, it's for a game. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Do you feel like your um, blogs and stuff like that are actually helping your insurance business? No, one hundred percent. It does not. <laughs> it has nothing. It just has nothing to do with it. We've built a system. It's a great question, and and, I, and I'm so glad you asked it because because I'm so proud of the fact that it doesn't. We built a, a very unique system with our insurance company that it not only doesn't help, it could potentially hurt if the people that I sold to saw the stuff that I was putting out. I mean, legitimately. I mean, we talk about income and how much money we made today and this week and this month and that's just not stuff people that you just sold something to want to hear. Uh, I can justify it, but I think that makes it all the more meaningful. Like when I say not monetizing, I don't mean like 
well, I don't monetize, but I have all these clients that just come to me from I don't know where. Like, no, I have never sold a single thing through any platform on social media ever. We had a day, that, we had a day like a month and a half ago where somehow a t like a button got pushed on Spreaker mm -hmm. to where it turned the monetization on, on Spreaker for our podcast. And all of a sudden, I think it was Ryan Mickler's podcast that I did with Ryan, I go to watch it and it all of a sudden it had pre-rolled ads. And I'm like, what the, like, where, where did this come from? And it was like code red, like level 1000 in our office. Like, how did this happen? Like, what? Like, I just sent him the link and it's got a freaking pre-rolled ad on it. Where did this come from? How did this happen? Uh, like, we're that, that, like, that focused on it. Like, we had like close to 500,000 minutes on YouTube viewed last, last month. And I honestly don't know if that's a whole lot or like nothing. Like I don't pay any attention to any of it, but all I know is no one's pressing that monetization button because I don't want to sit up here and say I don't monetize, but like, I'm like, yeah, but you know, I'm bringing in this much from this and this much from that. Like there's literally zero. Um, and I don't say that like as though it's better than anything else. It's just a different way of doing it. And I think it's something that hasn't been done before. So who knows? I don't really know what it'll And it's working. It's working yeah. for you for sure. Anybody else? I, I like that, um, you know, with, with what you're doing, you're very successful, obviously, at it. When we put this festival together, I was thinking, man, there's going to be a room full of these hams, right? People, because in media, right, podcasters, we're all kind of into ourselves. I thought there were going to be a lot of people taking selfies and, like, going live, and we've seen some of that. But I, I'm surprised at how many other podcasters are a little bit closed off when it comes to their own, like, time and their own process and things like that it's it's easier for us to kind of push out than, than let people in for the most part right so what kind of advice and you're out there so what kind of advice would you have for those of us that maybe struggle with that a little bit where you know, instead of putting other people our guests up on a little bit of a pedestal where we can do it ourselves because we need to grow our own personal brands as well uh, no matter what you're doing so you do it so well what, what can, can what kind of advice I think it's just your mindset it's your intent going into it like if your intent is to elevate yourself, then it's gonna come across a certain way. If your intent is to provide value by the conversations that you happen to be filming that wouldn't normally ordinarily be filmed, then it's just a completely different perspective on it. And so, you know, for me again, having this mindset of not being transactional. I'm just extremely intentional with every conversation now. Like it's, it's crazy for me to sit up here and say like social media has made me a better person because all the new news and media want to tell you is that social media is making everybody terrible people, especially the younger generation. Like what's wrong with these kids? They're all on their phone. They're, you know, no one's talking to anybody. It's because they're talking to everybody. That was actually pretty good. Did you get that? He didn't get it. <laughs> take two. Take two. Nobody, nobody cares. Take two. You have a camera there, man. That was like my first memeable quote. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But but it's the but it's the truth. Like I I started realizing things that I didn't like. We talk about self awareness being this huge buzzword, but nobody really knows what it means as far as like how to actually develop more self-awareness. They just say like, hey, hang around some people that'll tell you the truth about yourself, which they're not going to do. It's still gonna be completely skewed. But when you talk about doing stuff for the soul, like I will notice facial expressions in the vlog. Like TJ will be on this side of the room. I'm on this side of the room having a conversation with Ever. And I'm like, why do I look like I'm about to rip his head off? Like I look pissed off right He's now. Going, you're pretty big. I'm like, why like, Why do I look so angry? And like, make, it just makes me aware of these things that like, I'm watching myself. And so my conversations with people, I'm extremely introverted, extremely. And we go back and forth on really those definitions because it's not the confidence side, but it's just, I'm. Um, like I get very uncomfortable. I'm extremely uncomfortable right now. I'm extremely uncomfortable at all times with TJ for multiple reasons. <laughs> but, but it's just getting outside that comfort zone and embracing that discomfort. Like that's one of the biggest things that I preach on is, is embracing discomfort. If you seek comfort, the world will deliver you pain. If you seek pain and discomfort, the world will only deliver you pleasure. And it sounds crazy, but I've just seen it come true time and time and time and time again. No different than when you're working out. You know, if you work out till it hurts, it's probably where the improvements are going to come from. If you just go in there and feel good and have a good time, you're probably not going to get anything out of it. Um, it's just the same thing with life. So 
all this stuff is so uncomfortable for me, but it's just putting me outside of my comfort zone on a, on a daily basis. Okay, last question, and we'll open it up if, if anybody else has any questions, but right now, what are you the best at? What am I the best at? I think I'm the best at documenting the journey at the stage of the journey that I'm in. So this blueprint that Gary's kind of laid out, it's one thing for a guy to come out or, or a girl to come out and start giving out value and not asking for anything in return and that being the intent when they're worth $100 million. And they've got a giant company and houses and cars and organizations and just this, this huge empire that they've built. And then they want to start getting on social media and providing value. It's still commendable. It's still incredible. But it's like, of course they are. Like, of course they can provide value and not like, of course. People don't realize when you're in the stage that we're in and we're documenting journey, it's not only that we're not monetizing, it's that I'll spend a quarter of a million dollars this year on something that I know not just may not return a lot, like if it's, if it's a penny, it's too much. Like it's like, how did that happen? So knowing that there's not gonna be a single penny that comes in and still investing in all this between people and ad spend, like the fact that we run ads, but it's not conversion in the basis of putting them into a funnel, it's conversion based on impact. So we call it scaling impact. And to me, it's just, no one's ever done it. And so we're just doing something that's never done before. And to me, that's extremely exciting. Uh, but it's, people have, today have mentioned transparency a number of times. It's another hot button issue. It's funny how everybody loves, like if given the right question, everybody would scream from the rooftops here that the answer is transparency. But everybody loves to talk about transparency until it comes time to be transparent that's when it gets difficult. And I've tried to be as transparent as possible. There's still stuff that I haven't talked about yet that we're, that we're in the process of, of releasing, but telling the good, bad, and the ugly, like I don't, I'm just so, I got so fed up with this, I would call it a pattern, I guess. It was just rampant on social media that you're getting the filtered, fake, highlight reel of everyone's life. And, you know, six months to six figures and zero to broke and, you know, this amount of time and buy my book, buy my series, join my class, do this, this and that. And about how it's easy and fast and I can show you how to do it. And all I wanted to go out, out and do is tell people the real story. Like, it's extremely difficult to be successful. It takes a whole lot of work. Like, there's an insane amount of effort that's required uh, to do something extraordinary. But the nice thing about that word extraordinary is the fact that it's just the ordinary stuff that you already know how to do. You're just doing extra, you're just doing more of it than anybody. And so that's why I love being able to tell people that there's nothing special about me. I just do the ordinary stuff. I'm just willing to do a whole lot more of it than anybody else and document the process in doing so. You're putting in the work. Congratulations. Now, where can we find you online? So we've got the daily vlog, uh, which comes out. It's five days a week. It's on a 24-hour turnaround. Uh, and that's called the daily bread. So we're very big on bread puns. So we've got we've got the daily bread. We've got a podcast called the Breadwinner Podcast, which is an interview-based uh, podcast. It's on iTunes. Uh, it's on all the platforms. I've got my first podcast that I that first started with called the Sales Wolves Podcast. It's a sales more. It started as a sales podcast, but we realized that we had a lot more that we wanted to talk about. And so now we kind of base that around the fact that we think everyone's in sales, whether you're selling something to someone or you're selling yourself to do something. And then the, um, the let's see, we've got the vlog, the breadwinner bread podcast, we've got breadcrumbs, which is the one minute recap. We've got the daily bread flavor in your ear is the audio version of the vlog. Um, I own another brand called Motivation Kings, which is just like your normal, like motivational meme garbage. But it's huge. It's like it's just like. But it's. I mean, it's big. I mean, there's been weeks this past year where it's had over 49 million in weekly reach, um, posting yeah. motivational meme garbage. That's huge. Congratulations again. Thank you for coming and joining us. Thank you. Thank Let's you. go to Tyler. What's up, guys? If you have not yet done so, please like my Facebook page, then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down. And when it says in the newsfeed, click see first.
This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we want to have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first and we'll see you next time.